So let's go right into it with Bill and Ted Face the Music. With Bill and Ted uh, comes back Keanu Reeves and Alex Winters uh, from the long returning series. Uh, it's been 25 years since the last film. Mm. And in this film, uh, they are trying to once again uh, create a song that will save reality and time as <laughs> we know it. Because they also tried to do that in the second one, I believe. That was the whole premise of the second one was that they were trying to do create a song that would unite the world and save reality. But apparently they failed at it and they're back at it again. And then now they have to travel to the future because they say they will one day create a song at 7.17 p.m., they will create a song that will save uh, reality and time as we know it. Um, and in this one, we have some added additions to the cast. Uh, we have two women who come and play uh, Bill and Ted's daughter, uh, one of whom is Samora Weaving, who's Hugo Weaving's niece. She was also in the film Ready or Not. Um, A.K.A. Margot Phoebe. <laughs> Yeah, Margot. She's one of the clones. Uh, her, <laughs> Jamie Presley, you know, one of the Hollywood cloning machine uh, experiments. Uh, she was in a film called Ready or Not, which was very good. I thought that film was very good. Um, and you have uh, also uh, Bridget uh, Ludi uh, Payne, uh, who I haven't seen before, but she plays uh, Ted's daughter. And she even kind of looks a lot like Ted, like a young Keanu Reeves. Like she even kind of with the hair and kind of the face, she even kind of really looks a lot like a young Keanu yeah. Reeves. Um, and even in the uh, way she acted. Uh, yes, very much so. Also, I have to uh, correct you. She's a non-binary uh, actor. So uh, I think her pronoun is they. Oh, is she? They. Oh, okay. uh, yeah, she is. She's non-binary. Oh, okay. All right. So they. Um, yeah, so I think, you know, they did a really good job uh, playing a really young Keanu Reeves, getting the affectations down, getting the voice down. I, like, I don't know if she really, uh, if they really sat there and studied and really looked at the, pa you know, the past uh, uh, first two movies and to really get him down. But it was it was spot on to me. Um, some more weaving. Uh, her is trying to do Bill. It was OK. I, I thought that. I don't know if there's just not much to go on with Alex Winters' bill, uh, but I think a lot of it was just kind of like, oh, it was, it was fine. It was just typical. You know, it wasn't too much. Um, and the two daughters have a whole subplot where they're trying to help their dads uh, basically go around in history and gather the, some of the world's greatest musicians like Louis Armstrong, Jimi Hendrix, uh, Mozart. And that subplot is you know not as i don't think strong as the main plot itself uh really i, I didn't really think so i mean what did you that think was my about favorite that? part of the movie just kind of like going back and learning like who inspired who i thought that was interesting uh to see how oh so Jimi hendrix doesn't you know he, he doesn't fuck with us yet because he doesn't know who we are but we do know who inspired him and who we can get they go to Louis Armstrong, and then Louis Armstrong's just like, all right, like, you know who inspired me? Mozart. And then Mozart's just like, you know who inspired me? Uh, the ancient Chinese, like, flutist. And then, like, it just went back in time. I did like that aspect of it. Now, granted, I might have preferred it with, uh, with Bill and Ted kind of going back in time and trying to find bandmates. That could have been cool, but... Um, I don't know. That was kind of my favorite part. I didn't really like too much of uh, uh, Bill and Ted's personal journey going in the future and meeting them future selves. But that's just me. Mm. Nick, what did you think? Uh, I'm kind of with I'm kind of with you, Chase. Uh, the subplot with the daughters was I thought the stronger part of this movie because I think this movie has a, a great first act and a great third act, but it kind of drags in the middle with them repeating the joke of, hey, all right, let's keep trap, all right, Bill, Ted, let's keep traveling to the future and meeting our future selves and keep seeing just how much more we, we are, we're failures. Yeah. Let's <laughs> just keep going with that joke. And the first two times they did it, I thought, 
uh, okay, you're just repeating. But then they go to the prison and they meet their <laughs> giant muscular selves, which I thought that was the best joke in the movie. Yeah. <laughs> by far. <laughs> Them beating up the robot was hilarious. Which, by <laughs> the way, we're doing full spoilers. <laughs> oh, thank oh, thank goodness. The, oh, um, the robot, uh, Dennis... Uh, yeah. Uh, Kevin McCroy. Can't remember his last uh, name. Kevin McCroy, who's uh, who's played by Anthony Kerrigan, who was uh, a NoHo Hank on Barry. <laughs> mm. Yeah, uh, you you t- you raise an interesting point, saying how you know they're going to meet these musicians, and they they go back and and try to get the musicians who inspired them to meet. You know, you you raise an interesting point. Um, I would say it's you know the reason I thought it was kind of weaker because I just think those two people don't really have some more weaving um and the other uh, the other person they just don't have as much chemistry um i think as alex and yeah no, that's fair. you know so, so okay i can see that you know so they don't really have that built up chemistry like they do over the past you know two movies yeah um and it, i just don't think it kind of was all that exciting to watch it still was good but i just don't think it was all that exciting to watch and when they meet the historical figures like Louis Armstrong, um, uh, I don't know much about Louis Armstrong other than you know what a wonder the world. <laughs> I don't really know really much else about the guy personally, um, but the way that the the person who was playing him made him sound and kind of had him talk. Uh, first of all, he smiled like the the, the plant from Little Shop of Horrors. <laughs> uh, you know, most of the time, you know, you know, most of the time that's what he kind of kind of you know smiled like and you know he would just kind of talk like this and with a real deep voice and smile all the time and it's like oh okay you know that was i mean but he's only in the movie for a, a little bit so it's not that distracting um you know the person who plays jimmy hendrix is you know this just kind of like okay he just kind of walks around kind of cool and leaning i mean it's not really much to him um and but i still thought it was still fine it's still a, a nice little you know subplot for them to do um and this whole premise of you know them kind of you know being the kind of failures and and kind of losers because they didn't reach the goal of creating the, the big song that would really unite the world in the second film it's like well i don't know i mean you kind of living kind of well you know you you know like you know one thing i liked about it is they don't portray them as total losers because it's like well, when you really look at it it's like you got you, you are married you love the women you're with they love you you got each of them have a kid each of the kids adore them and worship the ground they walk on so i'm like you know and they live in a really nice neighborhood you know and i don't think they even have really jobs in it do they they still kind of i think primarily live off the money they made when they were kind of in their rock star phase yes yes i got that impression as well so it's like, well, it seems like you, you're doing pretty what you want. You're making music, even though if it's it's crappy music or weird music. You're kind of doing what you want. You're living your life. Don't seem like that much of a drawback. Um, and to your point of when they actually go to meet their alternate versions of themselves, I thought, you know, the different scenarios were, was funny. Like the prison scenario where they meet their buff, muscular selves. Um, the scenario where they were, you know, living in this fake mansion. Like, I thought all those situations were, were, were funny. I thought also you could have did that and did the whole kind of thing uh, with the wives, how the wives were with their future selves as well mm. and how they were traveling through time and meet all the other different versions of Bill and Ted as well. Because the whole thing with that is like they, you know, met their future selves and their future selves showed them why you shouldn't be married to them anymore and that convinced them to, to, to break up with them. Um, or to search through all, oh, actually, they said to search through all out time to see which version of Bill and Ted they'd be happy with. Um, and I thought that was good. I thought you could have maybe did something with that as well. That could have been funny with the with the two wives, but they didn't. I think you could have tacked on at least an extra 20 minutes. Um, I think the humor in it is, is you know, kind of nice. It's light. It's not mean-spirited at all. Yes, that it's, that's the biggest thing that I have to compliment this movie is is we finally have a man-child movie that isn't mean-spirited. These guys aren't like Zach Galifianakis in The Hangover where he's basically a functioning sociopath 
or Will Ferrell where he's just a giant asshole to everyone around him to the point that people with sense would just beat his ass <laughs> every day. And these guys, yeah. everything they do, it is in complete earnest. Yeah. They are the purest man-children yeah. and probably the most successful man-children in all of film. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, you look at all those other man-children. Uh, they all have no jobs, no wives. They kind of suck. I mean, while, you know, Bill and Ted, they made it at one point in their lives. Yeah, they made it, and despite uh, their lives not working out the way they wanted to, they're still optimistic yeah. after 25 years, yeah. which I think is something that... A, a portrayal that we could use in this total shit show of a year. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's yeah, it's, it's not mean spirited. It's not even the main characters is not making fun of them, how goofy they are, how maybe dumb they are. You know, it's not making fun of them at all. It just it just kinda it's it's lighthearted kind of humor. And like I said, that's you know, not poking fun at anybody. And I think that is really much needed, you know, like something this light, something that you can tell like it's just people had fun probably making it. They probably had fun coming back and doing it after so many years. Because I know this has been... I mean, they've been talking about doing a Bill and Ted 3 for, what, like, close to a decade? Um, Because I've always heard rumors about, yeah, I mean, they've written a script. And, yeah, I mean, Alex Winters, I mean, yeah, he would love to come back and do it. And it's like, yeah, I bet Alex Winters would love to come back and do it. I bet (laughs) bet he would. Yeah, sure. Um, You know, yeah, I I, I bet he would. Yeah. Um, So, you know, I know it's been tossed around for a, a while. And talking to some people who, you know, are big Bill and Ted fans, and I was like, well, you know, for someone, like, do you think it really, you know, lived up to it? And they were like, yeah, I mean, for, I think, a Bill and Ted fan, I think it's it's great. Um, you know, and for a regular fan, I think it's, you know, it'd be good for them to watch as well, but I think it's, you know, more for if you're, like, a really big fan. Um, me, I fall into the category of, I just recently saw the first film, like, a month ago, um, and I didn't see the second film. Um, so I'm not like a huge Bill and Ted fan, um, you know, just kind of a casual person who's, who's seen the, only the first film. Um, coming in this one, I thought it was, you know, I thought it was all right. Uh, I thought it was fine. Um, you know, compared to the first one, I would say it's maybe it maybe not as good because you just, you know, you have that kind of youthful, jovial kind of thing with, with both of them. Um, one of the best parts of this, the third one, was really when death came in. <laughs> Yeah. And I know oh, when, yes. and I know when people talk about um, the second one, they mostly talk about death. They say that movie's kind of so-so, but death is fantastic. Yeah, death, death is the real highlight of the second movie by all accounts. Yeah, and watching this one, and death is played by William Sadler, who was like the president in Iron Man three. Mm. Uh, yeah, and him seeing him in this one, I'm like, oh, okay, I can completely understand why he stole the show um, in these in the second one. I completely understand why a lot of his stuff when they go to to hell is really funny. Like a lot of his lines, um, I thought he delivered them really well. His back and forth with the robot was funny too. <laughs> yeah, I mean his back and forth stuff with the robot was very funny. Um, I thought they had a good dynamic. Um, so I could I could t- completely understand why you know he is such a big success. And and like I said, like their interactions with people like Bill and Ted, like you know how they are just kind of cool with everybody you know kind of it's like you know hey how you going you know how you doing you know they call everybody sir you know like like kid cuddies in this for some reason <laughs> he's a historical artist dude <laughs> yeah well I he, mean, is, you know, he is now <laughs> and not to say i have anything against kid cuddy but it just was kind of like why is kid cuddy here i mean you know what i mean like kid cuddy okay uh, sure you know but they say mr cuddy sir you know like they, you know they do that and you know they have a, a positive vibe a positive message i think that's just kind of enduring and that's kind of what the film is it's just kind of this enduring kind of you know kind of thing that you can really feel it you know from the movie it's a wholesome acid trip yeah pretty much yeah um and i think this they provide some good laughs in this um I think that the ending itself, I was kind of like, I don't really exactly know how you came to that conclusion. And since we're doing spoilers, um, you know, I'll let you guys give more of your thoughts before we get into the ending. But for me, I just uh, with the ending, I was just like, I don't know exactly how you came to that conclusion per se. Um, and then it kind of just cuts off and kind of ends. And it's like, okay, it seems like they kind of ran out of money. And I was like, okay, credits roll. 
and let's just show this footage, you know, of, of uh, this, this kind of footage of random people. Um, so, I, you know, overall, I, I had a good time watching it. Like, it's, it's just kind of makes you feel good. I think it provided some good laughs in it. Um, and somebody like me who's not a big Bill and Ted fan, I'm just a casual person who's seen only the first one, uh, I would say it's, it's solid 7 out of 10. Well, I think this is uh, uh, one of the most fun times I've had watching a movie in the last couple months. Like uh, with most man-child movies, where you're following a, an idiot lead, a lot of those uh, lead characters are very mean-spirited. They're very cruel to people around them, and it just you're laughing at them mm -hmm. instead of like Bill and Ted, where they're just so endearing, so charming, and so positive that y you laugh with them. Yeah. And it's just it's just fun. I really liked uh, the the casting of uh, Samara Weaving and uh, Bridget Lundy Payne as uh, uh, Billy and uh, Thea. I think uh, their subplot was my favorite part of the movie, especially going to what you were saying, Chase, about... Uh, every artist you know has been inspired by somebody else and just talking about like the immortality of music mm. yeah, I music I, yeah, I, I i do wish we got to spend a little bit more time with uh, bill and ted's wives that felt like they had something but it just got cut from the movie and i agree with you that the ending does feel a little rushed like, I don't really know how they got to that conclusion. I had to watch it again just to make sure there wasn't anything I missed. But this was just a good time. And so I'd have to say I'd give this seven and a half lawsuits with death out of ten. <laughs> uh, my personal take on it is um, with the ending. It just, to me at least, it kind of just made sense with like the logic of the movie. You know, I... I'm a I'm a new uh, Bill and Ted guy. I haven't watched any of the previous months. All I know is from like pop culture and just like references. But with that being said, I it, it made sense. I mean, they were unsuccessful with uniting the world with one song by their own selves, right? So the only way to to save reality in that logic of theirs is you make a song that everybody in the universe and all of time is playing at the same time. That's kind of what I got out of it. I thought that made sense. Um, and they're all playing it at the quote unquote same time, even though that, you know, doesn't necessarily make sense in logic, but it's like a wholesome, like, hey, everybody, let's all jam together and let's, and, the, and we're gonna save the universe by jamming. <laughs> yeah. So, what's your uh, final rating? Uh, I give it a wholesome acid out of 10. It's hard for me to rate comedies like these because it's not like these are like they're not meant to be critically acclaimed they're kind of just meant to be like fun so it's just fun dude if you have acid or if you just if you're drunk or if you're high check this movie out <laughs> all right um so i guess we just get into discussing like the spoilers with the ending um, so I was kind of unsure of like how they came to the conclusion, like their daughters were supposed to be the ones that were supposed to lead it. And, and they had like, uh, because in, in one ver they go to like the future and they meet their older versions of themselves and they give them a USB drive that has both their last names on it. They end up breaking it, um, because the robot, they want the robot to kill them so they can go to hell because they want to save their daughters who the robot had killed prior and got sent to hell so they wanted that's the reason why they want to get shot by the robot so did anybody know why they came to the conclusion or how they came to the conclusion their daughters were supposed to be the ones that were supposed to do it did anybody realize that at all or you know have any thoughts on uh, that i don't know dude <laughs> um my biggest guess would be just that uh because the daughters were used to assemble the band together that um, they were just kind of like, well, uh, this is kind of like they're handing down of the torch moment. This is bigger than just Bill and Ted, mm. you know? 
that's kind of what I got out of it. Yeah, like it was supposed to be like, hey, here's the new generation, you know, uh, and and like passing on to them because like even like uh, George Carlin's character, like his daughter shows up in the movie. Christian Shaw, like she, he has a daughter. They have daughters, yeah. Like so, kind of, you know, next generation type stuff. Uh, Nick, uh, what did you think? I, I, yeah, that's one of my complaints about the movie, is that it felt like that was kind of a rushed conclusion. But also, it kind of makes sense. Like you know, Bill and Ted watching, watching the last two movies and watching their journey through this one. And did you really think that they, those two are going to be the guys to write a song to unite the world? <laughs> so it kind of make it kind of made sense to me that it okay. would end up being their daughters. Hmm. Uh, because they say like the whole thing with their daughters, like they listen to a lot of music and they kind of just put together stuff they like and they kind of mix and mash a lot of stuff. Um. Yeah. I. I I guess I was like, yeah, sure, I'll just go with it. Yeah, why not? Yeah, sure. Um, And then the movie, when they, you know, like you said, when they do the whole giving everybody instruments all throughout time and reality, all that stuff, and they all play simultaneously, um, that's what saves reality, that's what saves the the world. Um, And then at the end, it's just like, yeah, we, you know, the world was about to end, then it didn't, and then cut the credits, and then everybody's doing like, you know, like a YouTube video of showing people across the world rocking out to, to Bill and Ted, you know what I mean? Like, just trying to be like Bill and Ted. So I was just like, okay, I mean, that was that was something, I guess. It's, it's like they just kind of came up with the ending on the spot and just kind of like as they, you know, as they were kind of doing it, it's like, uh, uh, sure, this thing happens. This thing, they, they save the world, boom, and show people rocking out. There you go. Okay, boom, cut credits. Okay, let's get out of here. Let's go. <laughs> All right, I, think, all I think there was a, there's actually a story behind mm, all those YouTube clips. I think like when they first were announcing that they were gonna be making a Bill and Ted three, there was like a YouTube challenge where hey, so show your support for Bill and Ted three by uh, recording yourself rocking out. Hmm. Okay, Which yeah, that's I what think it feels is like the most Bill and Ted thing to yeah. do. Yeah, that that definitely is is what it feels like. Uh, it feels like yeah, that's exactly what happened. Um, and you even see like Weird Al, uh, Weird Al Yankovic, like he was in one of them too. He was like you see him briefly in the montage of people. Um, yeah, I, like I said, uh, you know, like so that now that you say that, like that, that makes perfect sense. Um, but yeah, it was a solid movie. Uh, enjoy myself uh, watching it. Uh, do I think it's worth $19.99 um, on v- Hell uh, nah. VOD? <laughs> um, I mean, if you maybe split it with somebody, like you maybe go 10 each, or you know, you go maybe a group of people go five each, I think that'd be pretty nice. I think you you get your money's worth that way. Uh, full 20, uh, I mean, that's more than most movie tickets. Yeah. So, I yeah, so I, I can't see paying that much for it. But um, if you split it with uh, somebody, I think it's worth it. If you do. It's a strong alleged. Uh, you know, you could allegedly watch it. <laughs> yeah, you could allegedly watch it. As, as long as you watch it. As long as you watch it. Because I, I, I don't think you'd be too disappointed with it. As yeah. long as you watch it. If you always want to check us out, we are on all the social medias, Facebook, Twitter, you know, all that stuff. You can always check us out. To all you wonderful people out there listening to this, hope you have a wonderful day. And don't forget to always stay tuned.